An official inquiry into police corruption and high-level leaks of sensitive information continues to send shockwaves through the highest ranks of the Victorian police force. Today, the media director, Stephen Linnell, handed in his resignation, but it came as no surprise, like former Assistant Police Commissioner Noel Ashby, who quit on Friday. Linnell's career had already been destroyed by a series of telephone conversations secretly re recorded by the state's Office of Police Integrity, or OPI. Both men were targeted by the OPI as it tried to identify the source of leaked information about a highly sensitive investigation into police links to a murder. Beyond that, the phone taps revealed senior Victorian police officers immersed in a culture of intrigue, envy and ambition that would be worthy of Shakespeare. Mary Gearan reports, and we should warn viewers, that the following story contains some coarse language. There's two things. If tapes come out, uh, you've been talking to someone else, they're not yours, mm. Mm. and uh, they're not mine. But I have a thousand conversations a day, so... Yeah, exactly. And the answer is, look, I might have. I don't know. I can't remember. Hey. When the guardians of justice become the prey, there are sure to be shockwaves. The devastating power of the phone tap has been turned on some of the most senior members of the Victorian police force. I think it's a really refreshing change. It clearly indicates to everybody inside the police force that nobody who engages in corrupt activity should think they're safe anymore. Today, the head of media and corporate communications, Stephen Linnell, tendered his resignation. On Friday, it was Assistant Commissioner Noel Ashby who fell on his sword. You work with people closely, you trust them, um, and you believe that they're doing the best for the organisation. I think I feel betrayed. I think the corporate committee of Victoria Police feels betrayed, and I think the Victorian Police do as well. Both men were undone by embarrassing, indiscreet conversations. In this one, Mr Linnell appears to be warning Mr Ashby about being recorded talking to the powerful Police Association Secretary, Paul Mullett. Did you talk to Mullett on the phone yesterday? Yes. Right. Mm. I, sp I speak to him probably quite regularly. Why? Mm. Just got to be careful, that's all. Why, is he being recorded? Just be careful. Is, is he being recorded? Um, I can't say. He might be. I can't. I, I'm not. I can't say. I'll talk to you later. Fuck! Can you come and see me? I did talk to him yesterday, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, oh. Come and. Uh, I'll ring you on a hard line. The hearings have exposed a web of lies, petty jealousies and office politics expressed in the most explicit terms. Noel Ashby, the seasoned veteran who joined at 16 and rose through the ranks, has been shown to resent Deputy Commissioner Simon Overland, who was drafted from the Australian Federal Police and widely tipped to replace Christine Nixon as Chief Commissioner. Hello. Yeah. I just had Overland on the phone. Oh, yeah, what did that trick on? So I, I just, just wanted to get your thoughts on uh, how it all went. But beyond the merely embarrassing and sensational, these hearings have revealed what appear to be illegal leaks about a covert internal investigation called Operation Briars. It's looking into alleged police links with the murder of prostitute and self-described vampire Shane Chartres Abbott. The former media liaison has admitted that he leaked information to Mr Ashby about the investigation, despite earlier denials in closed hearings. And they appeared to discuss how to handle future OPI interrogations. You've got to be on your game the whole time and be thinking about what they ask and what they've previously asked. But I'm OK with that. Yeah, but the good thing is, um, um, there's two things. If tapes come out, uh, you've been talking to someone else, they're not yours. Mm. Mm. And they're not mine. Mm. And uh, and um, if if uh, but I have a thousand conversations a day. So yeah, exactly. And the answer is, look, I might have. I don't know. I can't remember. Hey.
you may have. What is yet to emerge from this inquiry is what was promised in the opening address, evidence that confidential information about Operation Briars was leaked to one of its very targets, named as Detective Sergeant Peter Lawler, a direct descendant of the Eureka Stockade leader of the same name. The information is said to have travelled through a circuitous route involving the figure lurking behind almost every conversation played so far, police union power broker Paul Mullett. He's due to appear on Wednesday and it's expected he won't submit meekly to the OPI's authority. Mr Mullett is an extremely powerful um, union man. He is, uh, his particular style is somewhat confrontational. The hearing has established a relationship between Mr Mullett and Mr Ashby, who says he had to feed the union man information and lies to get a better deal in enterprise bargaining agreements, as he complained to Mr Linnell. I'm sick of dealing with it. He's like, the main man I was thinking about, I thought, dealing with this guy is like dealing with a criminal informer. It's difficult and smelly. <laughs> The former assistant commissioner is alleged to have been the one to pass on the operational secrets to Mr Mullet. Is everything in? I haven't heard. Nothing else has come out. So Okay, um, that's good. Yeah, nothing at all. No other suggestion, no other names of, uh, of yeah. where you'd spoken to or anything. So that's all. wonder why then if your phone, if it was your phone, why wouldn't that be out already? Yeah, yeah. For some, this inquiry is exposing the corrosive forces operating within the police. For others, it underlines a lack of leadership and the need for an independent corruption force. Former Victorian Deputy Commissioner and former Queensland Chief Commissioner Noel Newnham says it reflects badly on the Chief Commissioner. Well, I think this has shown her to be not a strong leader, not a team builder. I think the powers that the OB OPI have are adequate for a police integrity type body, but we need something much um, more wide in this state. We don't have anything like the Crime and Misconduct Commission, for example, that they have in Queensland. But former head of the Victorian Police Complaints Authority, Hugh Selby, says an independent body or royal commission would be futile. A royal commission uh, always comes with an open time frame and is completely uncosted. Secondly, a Royal Commission is never an effective way of leading to structural change inside an organisation. Third, a Royal Commission always has unfortunate, to use the American term, collateral damage. You've seen uh, just over the last week uh, the plan that we've put in place is working. Today the Premier defended the OPI process as well as senior public servants who've been mentioned in the talk on tape. I'm not going to stand here every day and give you a running commentary on uh, every claim or background bit of gossip or chatter that's made by people on the phone. However, if the last few days are any guide, simple chatter can be a very dangerous thing.